Today, I'm gonna open this box, and inside this box is a very special tiki mug. Now, I know what's in here, but I haven't seen it yet, and this mug will be the inspiration for the drink that we're making today. Now, sometime back, maybe a year and a half to two years ago, I started following an Instagram page called Tiki Land Trading Co. I'm not exactly sure, but I believe it's a small business with a husband and wife team. They work with well-known tiki mug artists, and they sell a limited number of these online. Now, they also have a membership aspect, which I was always interested in, but it wasn't until randomly, I saw some stranger on Twitter share this picture. And I knew I had to have those mugs. And to do so, I had to become a member because there's only a limited amount of mugs that they're making for these characters. Now, this box right here does not contain those mugs. Those are not coming out until later in 2023. But the mug in here is another mug that once I saw, I knew that I absolutely had to have. So let's open up this box from Tiki Land Trading Company and I will show you the mug that is going to inspire the drink that we're gonna make today. This is this is uh this is for something else. And this right here, this is that mug. It's absurd. So this is Rosita. And she is based off of this Rosita, who is a talking white cockatoo that lives in the tropical hideaway inside of Adventureland at Disneyland. And she has a really cool backstory and a drink, which we will get to in just a few minutes. Before I talk about Rosita, uh, first of all, this mug is pretty awesome, but I might get to get nice in there. Look at that thing. We'll figure it out. Now they've provided a drink recipe here for a drink called the Rosie. We're not gonna make this drink because we're gonna make the drink that this tiki mug is based off. The Enchanted Tiki Room at Disneyland opened on June 23rd, 1963. That's almost 60 years ago. And it was the first place anywhere in the world to feature audio animatronics, which were invented by WED Enterprises, later to be known as Imagineering. Audio animatronics? Right, audio animatronics. The main host of the show is Jose, a colorful macaw, and he has the Spanish accent and is supposed to be from Mexico. Say hello to all the pretty girls. Oh, Early on in the show, some white ladybirds come down from the ceiling. And Jose says, in reference to Rosita Missing, her name has been featured throughout the park, kind of as a running gag and also incredibly deep storytelling by Imagineering. She was mentioned at the Adventureland Trading Post, in Trader Sam's, in the Jungle Cruise, and even in Big Thunder Mountain. Rosita is first referenced in 1963. Now fast forward to 2018, when Disney opens the Tropical Hideaway. It's a fast service food restaurant that's right in between the Jungle Cruise and the Enchanted Tiki Room. They have things like Lumpia, and it's another location you can get a Dole Whip. And here, when they open in 2018, we get our first real life Rosita. I'm unsure of the true history and the origin of this drink. Uh, I believe it was a standard menu margarita at Trader Sam's, but uh, I know it was not on the menu when I went in 2021, and it's not on the menu today. However, it is on the Trader Sam's Grog Grotto menu in Florida. So this could potentially be a drink that has only been served in Florida, but I'm not entirely sure of that. Now what makes this margarita drink unique is it uses falernum. And there are two types of falernum. There's velvet falernum and then a falernum syrup. The velvet falernum does have alcohol, it's at 11%, and your typical falernum syrups will have no alcohol. Now obviously the sugar content of your syrup will be much higher, so I will have recipes using both of these because 
They don't um, equal each other out and you can't just use them interchangeably. Now in general, Falernum is flavored with ginger, lime, almond, allspice, and cloves. And Velvet Falernum here is rum-based. Other than John D. Taylor's, I don't know of any other alcoholic versions that you can readily find on the market. The non-alcoholic version that is pretty common is from B.G. Reynolds. They make a lot of different tiki syrups, and I'll have a link to this one. You can find this on Amazon and possibly at your local liquor store. Just depends on how much of a selection they'll have of tiki-based syrups. So let's make a Rosita's Margarita. I'm gonna start with a quarter ounce of agave syrup. One ounce of lime juice. Half an ounce of orange curacao. Half an ounce of velvet falernum. of a Reposado tequila. I'm using La Gratona. Add some ice to your large tin. And shake for 10 to 20 seconds. Definitely not gonna fill this thing near to the top. Uh, look at the size of the hole on top of this, but I did find that your standard kitchen refrigerator ice cubes will fit in here. So let's pour this in, and I'm gonna use a strainer here to help sort of guide it in instead of a funnel. Uh, if you had one of those long Starbucks straws or a Dunkin' Donuts straw, uh, that's the only one, I, only one I have. I have made margaritas before with Velvet Falernum, so I kind of knew what we were getting into. That's a really good Reposado of tequila. Um, with the Velvet Falernum and the Orange Curacao, you get more of that sort of rich characteristics that you get from Orange Curacao that has that sort of brandy base, plus you're using Velvet Falernum, which has that rum base, so you're getting way more depth and you're getting a little bit of kind of that like oakiness to it but it's a, a wonderful margarita to kind of mix up from your standard margaritas and it's a great testament to this one right here rosita so tiki land trading company does sell mugs to people who are not members and they even have a category of mugs called blemishes um i think it's called blemishes and there's something wrong with the mug uh they stopped selling these and the only ones they had left were the blemish mugs, which I got. I don't see anything wrong with it. Nothing that my untrained eye would really notice, but maybe there's a crack somewhere in the glazing. But I think it looks great. Now, I highly doubt that I'll be using this mug in the future to drink out of, but um, it's just a great little Disney piece to have and something I can put on the bar behind me. Also, another suggestion is to head down the pathway to Bengal Barbecue, get yourself some skewers, bring them back to the Tropical Hideaway, try to find the table that's right next to Rosita if it's open, and she will talk to you throughout your whole meal. Uh, Jungle Cruise is in the background. It's just a really cool place to hang out. If you like tiki stuff or the tiki room or Disney, uh, it's one of the coolest places in all of Disneyland. That's it for this one. That's it for the Rosita Margarita featuring Rosita from the Tropical Hideaway in Disneyland. If you enjoyed this episode, uh, let me know. Leave a comment below, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll be back with more tiki drinks, Disney drinks, classic drinks coming up. And um, if you've ever had the Rosita Margarita or if you've ever met Rosita in person, let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, we'll see you on the next one. Hey, Rosita, did you hear about the tiger that got into the shipment of lemons? He turned into a real sourpuss. Riddle for you all. What is black, white, and red all over? Newspaper. A sunburned zebra!